and welcome on Watches TV and we're only a few days away from the unveiling of Jean-Claude Beaver and his son's first timepiece on March the 26th. This will for sure be a very important milestone for them and there's of course a lot of expectations around this, reason why we just wanted to check how things were advancing and capture the mood in this special context. Let's go. The excitement is growing and the more the excitement is growing, the more we see the future. And it's a bright future that we see now. So that adds to the excitement. Not only is it a new birth, but it's a new future. I feel the same, very excited, very fresh. We're launching in a few days, so it's super exciting. We have lots to show and we're really happy of how everything turned out. Uh, I have to admit, of course, we're a bit tired. Of course, it's been um, an incredible feat to do all this in approximately 13 to 14 months, uh, which is unusual for the watch industry. You know, as you know, it, it takes much more time usually. So we had to put all our efforts in, but everything's starting to, to pay and it's nice. So it was indeed a really tight schedule. And very concretely, at what stage are you now? What are you, uh, are you still expecting? We're assembling the last prototypes here in Givran, doing the last fine tuning for the sound, um, preparing the, the event, the launch, the retailer network. Um, so we're really tying up all the loose, loose ends. And now it's 20 days approximately of, you know, just focusing on making sure that everything goes to plan and everything works well. And between the kind of prototyping stage, I mean, where you see nice rendering, of course, but now being able to touch and feel uh, what it, the end product is really going to look like. Um, what are your uh, feelings? About My that? feeling is like nearly f the 50 years of feeling I had, which means I don't realize that we have started only 13 months ago, because the feeling is, the same as if we would have been here forever. So we don't feel like a startup company that is just starting. I feel as <laughs> it would have been like that for the last 50 years. And that's beautiful. But did you expect that going back to kind of a, well, it's kind of a micro brand in a certain way, uh, going back to the, the, this type of organization, that there would be such level of complexity in uh, uh, doing what you're actually doing now. Complexity is a little bit exaggerated. I would say I didn't expect so much work, but I also didn't expect so much help. And the last thing I didn't expect, so much success. We can already feel Success is in the air. Success is there. And in a few days, we're going to touch it. Because obviously, I mean, you've showed part of the project, I guess, to some people, to some collectors and so forth. And uh, so far, what is the, the, the feedback? So I think that initially, because we already started that phase um, a bit less than a year ago, after the first time we were at uh, in, in spring last year, um, I think, as you say, going from a 3D rendering to actually having the real piece is something that's totally different. And what we can see is that we've really managed to uh, make the real watch even better than the rendering. And I think people were, were waiting to see what, what it would look like. And now that we have things to show, it's all it's like a, a spark and everything's lighting up. So we're super happy. So did you have like uh, nice surprises? I mean, your level of expectation was kind of, uh, uh, again, surprised or were there parts that you said, oh, well, we wanted to, we should have pushed a little bit more and we're still pushing. I think it, each time you do something, you want to push it more. So, you know, we're perfectionists. So we see things that we say, ah, oh, we have to do better. We have to uh, solve this issue. We have to go to make it even more beautiful. Um, but I think, to be very honest, compared to where we, we started and where we're at today, uh, it's incredible and it's much better than even what we thought. And that's only because of the help of the suppliers around us, of our team, and they all worked relentlessly to make it 
happen and it's just I mean it's like giving birth like we're, we're super excited it's our baby and each time you receive a little component one wheel even one screw and you look at it and you're like wow this is going to be amazing and then you see it come together it's a beautiful experience to to sum it up <clears throat> in a few words we made the impossible possible as well as we made the invisible visible and that's the basement of our concept that's the basement of our philosophy that is what we are working on yep. so over the next few days it's really more fine tuning you're not expecting things that i mean you're waiting desperately that uh, will make your first watch uh, function for the unveiling no i think we all of that is is done so we're really in the final steps which are all can be also the most uh, dra draining uh, uh, steps because obviously the more you get close to the finish line the more each little increment becomes super difficult so um, but it's an interesting interesting process and we're just super happy to be here super excited and also to feel that you know when you're a team we're about 12 people here right now working um, we have this family spirit so each time we receive something we share it we sit down all together we eat together we talk about it we show our watchmakers our logistics teams our constructors and you can really feel that here inside the energy is every, each time we receive something everybody's like wow this is amazing and we push forward coming back on the team and the organization you said now you're 12 people uh we see that there's been a few changes also uh, around here uh, what were the uh ideas or motivation between uh, behind these uh, changes so the biggest change we had is a change of architecture in a sense is that we uh, changed where we initially planned to have our atelier of uh, horloger and decoration uh, we put them together in a big room that we have here in in the office um, we realized that we needed to t to take even more work of decoration and fine-tuning inside the atelier here and for this reason, we needed the best communication possible between our decorator and our watchmakers. Uh, and it was a choice that really made that really made sense for us. And today we're really happy to have done it because you can see really the exchange like watchmakers, they get a component. If they want to change something, they can give it to the decoration and vice versa. Um, so we really have this communication. It's really been helpful. And after the uh, unveiling, do you expect to already deliver the first pieces rather soon after that? S what's soon for an independent watchmaker? Uh, we're pr planning first deliveries in September 2023, so approximately six months after uh, the unveiling. And we keep a few watches th that are ready before in order that in September we can distribute and not... Uh, give too much priorities to a few. So you better don't deliver in July and August and start end of September, but having already three, four people that you can deliver. And uh, last time we were here, you, you, uh, we talked about the fact that you were already working on multiple projects, but because of uh, this unveiling, are you now like 100% concentrated on this or you're still pushing in other fields? The problem is that we're 100%, well, even 150% concentrated on this, but we still need to be 100% uh, concentrated on all the other projects because they need uh, to be followed closely. Uh, we need to be on time as well. You know, we don't, all our projects will have the same type of schedule. Um, we try to make it as easy as possible. So we really try to be proactive to get everything out of the way as soon as possible. So no, we're really still working very hard on the next pieces that will be coming out in 2024, 2025, and even 2026. And we must not forget, 2023 is gone. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's over. So we are full in 2024. And in two or three months, we'll be full in 2025, which is very normal. We always work at least one and a half, to two and a half years ahead. And it's the first time that we have the, the Beaver family name uh, on, a, on a watch. So on a personal level, do you have, do you feel a bit more, um, how do you say, a little bit more stressed with this or is it kind of the same? I, I, I would say it's quite the same, except 
that there is some proud to have my son with me and to have our name, because it's not just my name. If it would have been named J.C. Beaver, that would have been my name. Now it's Beaver, which means it's a family name. And it's a family engagement. And it's a family happiness. And it's a family proud. And I think that has, that has its strength and obviously its downside as well. But if I can share with you a story, is, um, maybe five or six months ago, we had a, you know, a few discussions regarding the decoration of some components we weren't so happy with. And uh, we were talking to people around us and I told them, we're putting our name on this and we're not ready to take responsibility to, do, to showcase a piece that's not up to our standards. It's our pride. It's our name, it's our credibility. Um, so it also makes us want to be better. We cannot hide behind anything. Of course. Well, good luck with this unveiling and uh, looking forward to seeing the final piece. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, so one important piece of news is that indeed the brand will now be known solely as Beaver and not JC Beaver. And this was probably a very wise choice considering what they want to achieve with this brand in the future. Thanks for watching, can't wait to see the final timepiece and we're only a few days away from this. The very best to you and see you real soon and Viva Watchmaking!